to praise Him, and forevermore I will reign with Thee. Oh, such a lovely, lovely name, the name of Jesus. Such a lovely, lovely name, the name I love. Such a lovely, lovely name, the name of Jesus. Such a lovely, 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 lovely name. Oh, such a holy, holy name, the name of Jesus. Such a holy, holy name, the name I love. Oh, such a holy, holy name, the name of Jesus. Oh, such a holy, 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 holy name. Amen. A whole family in heaven's name. Amen. Hallelujah. There's power in that name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. That only place of worship is in that name. Amen. Praise the Lord. A couple testimonies here. Amen. I'll ask Brother Keith to come up and open with a word of prayer. Amen. Sister Shekinah, I just want to thank the Lord for this morning's message and the change the Lord is making in my life. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, my soul is, is rejoicing because I know the time we are living in. It's going home time. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, Sister Shekinah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Sister Brooks, on Thursday night at prayer, I had a request about my job and how it seemed like the devil was just bringing in confusion i just want to thank the lord for the ones that pray uh pray for me because friday my job really went well and i'm so thankful to the lord so thank you lord amen praise the lord hallelujah amen amen not just the mechanics amen but the dynamics amen god's working amen praise the lord house brother keith Let's just bow our heads and our hearts. Father God, we come to you this afternoon, corporately, Lord, thanking you for all that you are to us, Lord. Lord, we desire never to forget that it's you that are all in all, that it's you that guide us by your fire, it's you that teach us by your Holy Spirit, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for that you are he that's provided that place, Lord, in our hearts and the soul, Lord. Or there we can abide with you, Lord. Abide with you, Lord, by your word being in us and us in you. And what your word has shown us is perfect communion, Lord. Lord, you said to enter the gates with thanksgiving, Lord. I, we just repent for all the times we've entered our prayer with our thoughts on ourselves lord it's all about you lord where would we be without you lord and so we ask you lord to come lord and take us by the hand lord this afternoon as we pray that we pray as your word says in the spirit lord we thank you lord for your spirit and we thank you lord for all those who have had praise offerings tonight lord and we thank you, Lord, for you know how you've touched those hearts, how you revealed yourself. We thank you for your revelation and your spirit of wisdom, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for enlightening our eyes of our understanding, Lord. We, we cannot receive your word tonight unless we have that, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for all of our jobs. As Sister Ruby had a, a burden on her heart, Lord, it's... You said to seek first the kingdom Amen. of God, the peace and joy and righteousness, and all these other things will be added, Lord. So we know that the sisters sought first your kingdom of God for all those other things to be added, Lord. Lord, we praise you, Lord, for the high calling that you've given us, Lord, the high calling to place us exactly where you have us, Lord. 
where without you we'd not be there, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to be a, a walking and talking testimony, Lord, that you are high and lifted up, Lord, in us by your provision, Lord. Lord, you showed us through the, the word, Lord, that our sister Esther, Lord, had just desired all things for purification, Lord. And we, we too, Lord, we see that tonight, Lord. And we see in your word there, right there in Hebrews, Lord, one, that you hate iniquity. And you love the oil of gladness, Lord, for you give us that, Lord. You love holiness. You love the righteousness, Lord. And, Lord, you provided us your fire not only to guide us but to cleanse us, Lord, and to quicken us. You said if that same quickening that raised your mortal body, Lord, be in us, it will raise us and quicken our mortal bodies, Lord. Lord, we live with you. We died with you. We resurrected with you, Lord. And we set today in heavenly places in you, Lord, for it's real, Lord. If we could just grasp, Lord, the greatness of it, Lord, we'd shout and sing. There'd be no man to be able to shut us up, Lord, for you've opened our mouth not to talk but to give praises, Lord, to you, Lord. And I pray tonight, Lord, that that be manifested, Lord, that your word be vindicated of why you opened our mouths, Lord. You said to be careful, Lord, that the tongue is, is, is rooted off and anchored off to the very hell, Lord. And it's full of a world of iniquity. I pray nothing come out of our mouth, off of our tongue, other than praises and honor and glory. We thank you, Lord, for our, our brother who has been face to face with you, Lord. I pray nothing has gotten in the way between you and him, Lord. I just pray in the name of Jesus Christ, as we knelt there t this afternoon preparing for this time, that your wall of fire be about this place, just not in the sanctuary, and not just in the outer sanctuary, not just in the vestibule, not just in the pastor's office, Lord, but out in the parking lot, Lord, on the sidewalk, Lord, back in the storage room, Lord. I pray the whole place be filled with your glory, Lord. We desire to glorify you, Lord. We desire, Lord, to show our love, Lord, that we've received your love, and now we can, all that we do, Lord, will, will be edification of you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, now we pull on you as we accept our posts of duty, Lord, again this afternoon and just desire, Lord, all that you have. You've given us that word there and the kind of glory behind the inner veil, Lord, to eat on that manna that never grows old, Lord. And we just continue this afternoon, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity once again to give our tithe and offering according to your word, joyfully and gleefully, Lord and our offering, Lord, for the needs of the church. And we ask it in your precious name, the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When I see the blood, hallelujah, I will pass over you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> O oh Christ, our Redeemer, died on the cross, died for the sinner, paid all his dues. Who oh, sprinkle your soul with the blood of the Lamb, and I will pass, will pass over you. Who oh, and I see the blood. Saving, justly his due. Oh, hide in the saving, sin. Clean. 
cleansing blood, and I will pass, will pass over you. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass. sing that song, Amen, one of them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are people almost everywhere whose hearts are all aflame with the fire that fell at Pentecost, which cleansed and made them clean. It is burning now within my heart. All glory to his name. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Amen. 
Amen. Aren't you glad? Yes. Amen. To be one of them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's sing Amen. Ain't it grand to be a Christian? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Especially in this day. Amen. A lot of people put that Christian there. Amen. But it so, means so many things to other people. Amen. But be the life of Christ. Amen. A Christian. Amen. Ain't it grand to be a Christian? Ain't it grand? Ain't it grand to be a Christian? Ain't it grand? On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and all day Sunday. Grand to be a Christian. Ain't it grand? Let's sing that again. Oh, ain't it grand to be a Christian? Ain't it grand? Ain't it grand to be a Christian? Ain't it grand? On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and all day Sunday. Ain't it grand to be a Christian? Ain't it grand? Oh, ain't it grand to love your brother? Ain't it grand? Ain't it grand to love your brother? Ain't it grand? On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and all day Sunday. Ain't it grand? Love your brother, ain't it grand? Love your sister. Oh, ain't it grand to love your sister, ain't it grand? Ain't it grand to love your sister, ain't it grand? On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and all day Sunday, ain't it grand? Love your sister, ain't it grand? Walk with Jesus, ain't it grand to walk with Jesus, ain't it grand? Ain't it grand to walk with Jesus? Ain't it grand? On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and all day Sunday. Ain't it grand? Walk with Jesus. Ain't it grand? Be a Christian. Oh, ain't it grand to be a Christian? Ain't it grand? Ain't it grand to be a Christian? Ain't it grand? On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and all day Sunday. Ain't it grand to be a Christian? Ain't it grand? Once again, oh, ain't it grand to be a Christian? Ain't it grand? Ain't it grand to be a Christian? Ain't it grand? On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all day Sunday, ain't it grand to be a Christian? Ain't it grand? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Not just on Sunday mornings and Sunday afternoons. Amen. Amen. But we're a walking epistle. Amen. Known and read of all men, not just on Sunday. Amen. And on Wednesday nights. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When the saints go marching in. Hallelujah. As our sister, amen, said in her testimony, it's going home time. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm a pilgrim and a stranger Wandering through this world of sin Oh, all my way to that fair city Oh, when the saints go marching in Oh, when the saints go marching in Oh, when the saints go Oh, when the saints go marching in. 
swing low and I'll step in on the clouds I ride to heaven oh and the saints go marching in oh and the saints go marching in oh and the saints go marching in oh Lord I want to be in that number When we gather, oh, when we gather round the throne, and the gates are closed within, oh, I'll be shouting glory, glory, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in. To be in that number, oh, and the saints go marching in. Oh, I am waiting for the chariot to swing low, and I'll step in. On the clouds I ride to heaven, oh, and the saints go marching in. Oh, and the saints go marching in. Saints go marching in. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Our brother Elijah, amen, went up in that chariot. Amen. Amen. There weren't other people, amen, that are going to go up. Amen. Hallelujah. Believe that? Amen. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God. Yeah, me. 
made me glad. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name. Glory, glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, oh, I'm so glad that Jesus set me free. Oh, I'm so glad that Jesus set me free. Oh, I'm so glad that Jesus set me free. I'm singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Once again, oh, I'm so glad. Oh, Jesus set me free. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, Jesus set me free. Amen. Oh, I'm so glad. Jesus set me free. I'm singing glory. Hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Oh, Satan had me bound. But Jesus set me free. Oh, Satan had me bound. But Jesus set me free. Oh, Satan had me bound. But Jesus set me free. I'm singing glory. Hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Oh, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Oh, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Oh, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm singing glory. Hallelujah. Jesus set me free. I'm on my way to heaven. Shouting victory. I'm on my way to heaven. Oh, shouting victory. I'm on Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, I'm so glad, Jesus. Oh, I'm so glad, Jesus set me free. Glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Amen. Let's give God a round of applause. Amen. Surely God is good to us. Amen. Amen. We're just going to get right into the word. Amen. I'm so glad that Jesus set me free. Amen. I was talking with our brother Keith after service, and he said something. And I know I'm just going to bear witness. I didn't say anything to him this this morning. Uh, but uh, I do want to say this. In my studying on yesterday, uh, may have been this morning, the, the, the expression, the last call, it did enter my heart and my mind on titling my message. And I remember thinking, Lord, but I don't know whether that be so. But then Keith may mention something about the last call this mo- after service, morning service. And I, uh, so I looked it up a little bit today. And, uh, you know, this message is the last call. But I want to say, could it be that we're now into what is, prior to the rapture, the last call? Uh, Think about it, because at a time of the rapture, and I keep going back to Miss Lot, because she turned, and then Jesus said, there'll be two in the bed, two in the field. See, that was the last call when Ms. Lot turned. That was at the time God would rapture a church. So we're looking at a time, let me me put it this way, there's no turning back. And uh, you can't be so concerned by others or for others. You want to bring them, but remember, amen, to turn, and, and Brother Adam said it like this, he said, uh, Ms. Lot, God didn't even give her a name, but she had children down there, loved ones down there, and she had a right to turn. There was something that made her turn, but the order was not to look back. So that's where we are. I, I believe that with all my heart. And I hope and trust that you would take this in a real serious manner. uh, That if you've been unstable, wishy-washy, whatever you want to say, now is to girdle up the loins of your mind. It's 
It's now to be sober. It's now time for you and all of us, uh, myself, to be more serious about God than ever before. You will not get another opportunity. There are pools, and these pools will either pull you up or down. Now it's time for you to make your choice. Turn with me now to 2 Chronicles 7.14. And by the grace of God, I trust you and I, uh, you'll be blessed uh, with the message. Amen. I believe that God was here this morning, and I believe that the Lord is here now. Uh, Is that all right? You know, we have a sure word of prophecy. We, we're not guessing at this thing. It's, it's been proven. It's been, it's been time tested. Now, I don't know what next year is going to bring, uh, but you better believe it. You're going to have to be a better Christian next year than you are now. Amen. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. That's the day we're living in. Amen. Amen. Coming from Second Chronicles 7.14. It reads, if my people, which are called by my name, should humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Hello, somebody. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So watch this because they are the, these people who are called by God's name still are the reasons. We're the reason for the season. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Now listen, because you know you and I can't flirt and hang with the world without being changed. Psalms 90 and 1. You love the Lord? Surely God is good to us. And uh, oh. I love this 90 and 1, and this is a fresh scripture to me. I'm sure I've read it before. But 90 and 1 reads, The Lord, Lord, thou has been our dwelling place in all generations. Amen. There is no other dwelling place. The Lord has been our dwelling place from the time it started to the ending of of time. From generation to generation and all generations, the Lord has been our dwelling place. One more scripture, Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Mm -hmm. That's delicious. Let us pray. (laughs) Father God, we come before you, Lord Jesus, as humble as we know how. We thank you for being so good to us, our God. We thank you for being present here this evening. Lord, break and destroy the yokes of the enemy, Father. Tear down, O God, every wall that Satan may have put up, Lord. Uproot every demon, every devil, everything that's not right. This is our year of Jubilee. Hallelujah. This is our time to go free, Father God. Give us the grace to drop every hole, every rake, every hold, everything, Lord God, that's not like you, Lord. Grant it in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Now, whether you believe it or remember or not, Brother Branham talks about, he said, the greatest bomb shelter that God had ever given, amen, to the bride of Jesus Christ is under the shadow of the almighty wing, almighty God wings. Is that right? How can we be sheltered by feathers? 
But God, amen, is omnipotent, and God can do exactly what he wants to do. Now, we said this morning, amen, we were working with, uh, still working with the end time, the jubilee, amen, showing by the grace of God our time, amen, is almost over. It may, listen, ev basically everything has been practically fulfilled. Yeah, yeah. We're now, we're now, you say, well, it, the, 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 the only last thing, and, and I wrote that down, Brother Branham said it like this, he said, he said, just like he did the Jews, with the Jews, he showed a great measure of grace to them, making his last call so that the unbeliever will blaspheme the Holy Ghost and be worthy of the condemnation they're fixing to receive. So what God is doing, he's giving us extra grace. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. amen, that here we are in this last day, amen, but the grace in which God will give us will also cause the unbeliever to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Why? Because we're living in an intellectual age. We're living in an age where people think that you can literally just work your way to heaven. Amen, but we realize, amen, it's not by works. It's not he that willeth, nor he that runneth, but it's God who shows mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. And we showed you this morning, amen, how that the Lord said, said, amen, even in his word, amen, that his grace would be sufficient for us. Amen. Is that right? Let me say it like this. Every animal, you've heard me say this before, every animal, Amen. In Noah's day, did not feel the pull. Right. If you're feeling the pull, that means you are elected of God. Amen. You've been chosen of God, amen, amen to make a trip. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're feeling the pull. Amen. Come on, somebody. Why? Because there are so many people in the world who are not feeling the pull. Amen. But if you're feeling the pull. That means God is still dealing with you, Amen. and he hasn't cut the cord yet. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, what Jesus did, and I've got to go back to Calvary for a moment. What Jesus did was triumphant. It was something no one else could have done. Remember, amen, that Jesus was able to heal the sick. But remember, even in the Old Testament, there was healing. In the Old Testament, there were miracles. Come on, somebody. Amen. So Israel had seen and had on their records histories of healings and deliverances and miracles. And so when Jesus came to do what he did, yes, it was a wonder. It was a all. It was refreshing. But Israel knew that Jehovah God could do it. But something Jesus did that Moses didn't, couldn't do and Joshua couldn't do and, and none of the other prophets who were great could do. Jesus said, he said, he said, I lay this light down, Amen. and I'm going to pick it up. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, listen, he said, because see, nobody else had seen this. Right. It was even Job's question. If a man dies, shall he live? <laughs> I need to understand this resurrection, because listen, the only, the only one who could do this would be God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we realize by the grace of God, when Jesus came, he was different from all the other prophets because none of these, uh, the other prophets could declare this. None other could say, I'll lay it down and I'll pick it up. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, no man taketh my life. I'm going to lay it down and I'm going to pick it up. Is that all right? So this in itself made the disciples wonder, could it be? Could this really be the one? Now, listen, they had heard him say many things they couldn't understand, and they, they pondered in their hearts, and even on the day after the resurrection, they're, they're talking. Oh, my, we really thought he was one. We really thought he was the one. I remember when he said this, that, and the other, but look, he's been dead three days. <laughs> Hallelujah! And all of a sudden, a stranger come walking down the road. Oh, my God! Amen. And began to join themselves to him. And he began to act like a stranger. He said, what are you talking about? He said, 
They said, have you been a stranger around Jerusalem and you don't know what's going on? This man we thought would be the Messiah. Ooh, that must have pierced Jesus' heart. This man we thought would be the Messiah. He, he, we, we, we believed in him. We followed him. We left everything. But they killed him. And he's been dead in the grave three days. Jesus began from Moses all the way up. He started from the Old Testament and began to preach Jesus. The Christ, hallelujah, the resurrection. And the Bible tells us, amen, that he began to open their understanding to the scriptures. And the Bible said, ah, when it came to the end, he pretended as if he would go. And they begged him to stay. See, that's what Jesus wants you to do right now. He's been acting like he's going to leave us, but he, he, he wants us to beg in this state. Be- oh, God, please stay. Hallelujah. And we find out that when, when that happened, amen, he went on and he began to have supper with them and continued expounding the scriptures. But something happened. He broke the bread. I don't know how much light was in there, but somehow they must have saw the nail pierced hands. Oh, God, they must have seen something that reminded them of the day before they captured him. He sat down, he broke the bread and said, this is my body. This body will be broken for you. Hallelujah. My blood, this is my blood. Drink you all of it. This is my blood. This is the covenant that I'm giving unto you. Somehow when their eyes were open, he vanished. No doubt within their hearts, they said, surely is he. He said he would raise up. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Now, remember, they were really wondering. All of them were wondering, even Thomas. Thomas said, don't bring me no bad news. (laughs) I don't want to hear all of this stuff, this fanaticism. Jesus raised from the dead. I was there. I saw what he looked like. And you trying to tell me he's living? I won't believe it. Until I thrust my hand into the wounds. Hallelujah. I thank God for the door. He says I am the door. Hallelujah. So he didn't need no other door. The door walked through the door. Hallelujah. And said here I am. The door is open. Thrust your hand. And I could see him put his hand in his side. And he falls to his knees and said oh my Lord and my God. What was he doing? He was literally solidifying. His death, burial, resurrection. He was increasing their faith by appearing to them and allowing them to see, I am alive and well. Whew. Come on, somebody. That's what Brother Random did. He didn't preach a dead Jesus. He preached a living Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And he made him visible so that the people's faith would be united and strengthened To see that the Jesus of the Old Testament, or Jehovah of the Old Testament, is Jesus of the New. And he's still alive and well. You got to have a testimony. You personally have to have a testimony. Whether it be like Philip, whether it be like Thomas, whether it be like Peter. You've got to have a personal testimony. To know that he's alive, not with somebody else, but with you. Is that all right? Listen, he said, listen, go tell. He says, you're not tied to nothing. You're only bound to the bonds of love. Don't let nobody tell you that you're free in this nation. You're not free. You're never free. You're either a bond slave to Christ and his love or the devil. Hello? You're either a bond slave to Christ or the devil. You're a slave to the devil and his things or you're a slave to something. I'm glad to be Christ's slave. Crucified to the things of this world, yet I live, not I. But Christ liveth in me. Mm, mm. If the people could only see that, if they could only open their hearts and see that it's back to the Bible, 
back to Christ, back to the cross, back to the gospel. Hallelujah. The power of the cross. Come on, somebody. That's the gospel. All of the great mysteries are great. But what good are they without the demonstration of the power of the cross? Some of us may sit here and don't even know we're saved. Amen. And he had already saved us. Hallelujah. You said, brother, when did he save me? I can't tell it. He saved you before the foundation of the world. You can accept it or you're not, but that's when he saved you. There's always some doubt in Thomas's. Hallelujah. But he still was in the bunch. Hallelujah. I love that. Glory to God. Now look at this. Amen. Because listen, he said, he goes on to say, uh, yes, that's what it is. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. The devil seen the church go off on a great big tantrum. We are the assemblies. We are the church of God. We are the oneness. We are the two-ness. And amen. You see, that is, he said, all these other things. Why didn't you stay the way you were? Why didn't you stay the way God provided for you? Even in this, own, this message we call message, there's a cream of the cream of the crop. Everything that call themselves a follower of the message is not of the message. You say, what do you mean two million followed Moses? Hallelujah! Come on, somebody. They were able to follow Moses, but they never reached the promised land, which was the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! Come on, somebody. They followed him, but they died in the wilderness. Murmuring and complaining. Hallelujah. He said the biggest mistake Israel ever made when grace had already provided them a prophet, provided them a lamb, given them the greatest revival they ever had, and was standing on the shores of the Dead Sea, dancing in the spirit, singing in the spirit, having a jubilee. In Exodus 19, they didn't want that. They wanted a theologian that they could argue about. That's right. They was only about four days away from the promised land. The same mistake that our Pentecostal fathers made not long ago. So he goes on and he ties it. That's why we're still here. They organized it. They wouldn't let the Holy Spirit move. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, we don't do like that among this church. Come on, somebody. I don't care if you do Somerset flips and everything else. As long as the Holy Ghost got you doing it. You still ain't out of order. Like brother said to me, when I get to heaven, I'll be throwing my crown down anyhow. <laughs> Worthy is the lamb. Hallelujah. Worthy is the lamb. Hallelujah. That's when you're going to see a real holy roller. Hallelujah. I'll be acting like Ezekiel wheel in the wheel. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Listen, he goes on and says, that's right. They was only about four days away from the. Uh, uh, promised land, the same mistake that our Pentecostal father made not long ago. How little? Well, you couldn't have told them that, that they was 40 years from the promised land. They had to go get something that could, they could argue about. What did God do to them? He left them in the wilderness for 40 years. Mm. I'm saying something here. One day God said, you've been in this mountain long enough. Let's rise and go north and take the promise. Why not, brother? Because that's where the throne of God is. It is in the north. And that's why the devil said, I shall ascend above the stars in the north. Come on, somebody. Amen. Even scientists know that. Forty years, Israel fighters, God had to let them live to die. Forty years. Millions of people died, still following Moses, but was dead. Hallelujah! Still following the prophet, but was dead. Why? They never agreed with him. I'm not talking about the ones who agree with him. I'm talking about the ones who don't, didn't agree. No, sir, they all had their own interpretation. Dathan and Cora and all the rest of them, and they died in the wilderness. Like figure, if they, the fighters of the Old Testament, if they had to die, and we're in the third exodus, yeah, amen. we have fighters. Amen. And all of them dying. Yeah, amen. The big ones are already gone. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. So if that be the truth, it's time for the 
the people of God to unite as a new generation. Woo! 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 Glory to God. As a new generation to cross over because we believe the prophet's message. Why in 2012? I asked the Lord, I said 40 years versus 50. Why 20? Because uh, 2012, amen, was the 49th year. Seven Sabbaths. 49th. They couldn't, couldn't last to the, to the last one. Because in the 50th, it, can, it calls for rest. No man's labor on this one. The fields got to go wild. Oh, my. Let them grow up wild. Hallelujah. Let them grow up wild. No man controlling this. Oh, my God. Let them grow up wild. And he says, let the strangers come and eat of it. Hallelujah. Let whosoever will, let him come. Let him come. Let him eat of it. My God, people, look where we are. But right now, this generation, what we need is a repentance. Because I'm going to tell you something. They could, could just cross over Jordan. They had to sanctify themselves. And you can't sanctify yourself until you repent. Until you confess. Listen, God can't forgive you until you confess. Hallelujah, you confess, God forgive. You don't confess, God don't forgive. I don't care how deep it's hiding in there. God sees it. Hello, you can't go no farther than that. Hallelujah, listen. You say, well, what's wrong with this bride? I can read the scripture, says the Lord. Thou hast been our dwelling place. The bride of Jesus Christ cannot, she cannot be satisfied until she goes behind the veil of God and stay there. Hallelujah! Why she know that's where eternal life is? And that's where I got to go. Hallelujah! So I'm going to sanctify myself. Now let me come back to this. Because when you go beyond the veil, you leave the seven candlesticks behind. Hallelujah! I don't mean no harm, but Eliezer could not go in the tent with Isaac and Rebecca. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, my God. It was a personal experience. Amen. That only the bride of Jesus Christ has been ordained to experience. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. You say she's not worthy. But no, the God said, God said, I have made thee priest and king. Hallelujah. I have made you priest. And kings. So he ordained us to go back there. Hmm? Is that the word? If it's, it's so powerful, God says the spirit and the bride say come. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. He brings it right down. He said the spirit and the bride. Why did he say Jesus? Because the bride is Jesus Christ. Woo! Glory to God. I don't know whether you're feeling good, but I'm ready for a rapture. <laughs> I'm ready to be changed. Ninety-one and seven. Amen. The Bible said, "A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee." Huh? That's where the bride's supposed to be. Huh? While the world is going down, she's going up. Is that the vision? He saw the bride going up while the world was going down. This world is going, come on somebody, and America is getting ready to hit the bottom. This, this judgment is not just against America, it's against the whole world. You don't believe that? He said he saw a preview of the church. All nations. All nations. He said, listen, he said all nations was defiled. That, come on. He first saw the bride of Christ marching to the word of God, marching to with Christian soldiers. Come on, somebody. She kept in step. She went up. Amen. Then here come the preview of the worldly churches. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, Miss America was the worst of them all. Amen. Said she was naked. All she had was a little piece of gray paper in front. He said, in the back, she had nothing. 
and she was shimmering and kicking her legs. Are they not doing that now? Come on, somebody. They're doing it. That alone proves the word is right. He said, all of a sudden, he said, Father, he said, that's all I produce. Is that all my message I'm produce? He was hurt. He was hurt. All of a sudden, here come another little bride. He said, now listen, he said, the worldly church passed by once. Woo! Hallelujah! But the second bride, what was it? It was the bride when he was on earth. Hallelujah! And it was a bride after he left. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Come on, somebody. That's who it was. He knew he had a bride. He saw what he had. Hallelujah, but he went off the scene. But God gave him a preview. Hallelujah. Don't you worry. That word got home. Hallelujah. And he saw the bride of Jesus Christ just at the end. She was about ready to get out of step. And he said, stay in line. Stay in line. Stay in line. And I believe with all of my heart, this is our opportunity to get back in line. Hallelujah. To get back in line. <sighs> Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. I don't know what you. Listen. Amen. Listen. God has given us a word of defense. I said that this morning. Is that right? Amen. Romans 10, 8. Let me. Let's read that quickly. Romans 10, 8. A word of defense. We don't have to worry about this devil. We got something more powerful than any devil. We got the Lord of the devil. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Like Brother Ben said, we got the God of the word. Hallelujah. Oh, go to God. Amen. We got the God of the word. Romans 10, 8. He said, listen. I'm sorry. Yeah. But what's said? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Amen. You say, well, brother, how am I going to make it through this tribulation? How am I going to make it through these trials? The word is nigh thee, even in your mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a sword. And you must understand if he's in you, Amen. he'll speak for you. Amen. Is that right? Come on, somebody. He said, because of the word of your patience, you held on my word. You stayed with it. I tried your patience. I didn't answer you when you wanted me to. But I worked you and I worked you I worked you. But you held to it. You knew I was true. You knew I was God. And because you have faith in me, I answer your prayers. Hallelujah. I'll come to your rescue because you waited on me. You trusted me. You had faith in me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's not the, even in your mouth. Don't back off of what you just, you speak. Hallelujah. Don't back away from it. Let me tell you something. If anybody in this message, worship Brother Branham as God, is antichrist. And hell is waiting for you. Did you hear what I said? Amen. There's only one Lord, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. There's only one name, and that name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Neither is there salvation in any other, but there's none other name given in the heaven whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus Christ. And I know what message people are doing. They're baptizing in this thing. They're doing all kinds, but that's not the Holy Ghost Amen. that got those people doing that. That prophet wanted to come off the scene because of what they did to him. Ma, he'll turn in his grave to see what some of these people are doing. Look how blessed you are. You know the truth. You know who saved you. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Listen, even I heard stories how they waited for him to raise from the dead. They were number one man can do that. If he was God, he would have got up. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. If he was God, he would have got up. But there was only one man, hallelujah, who said, I'll lay my life down and I'll pick it up. And that was Jesus Christ himself. Hallelujah. 
Jesus Christ himself. Woo, but he said, don't you worry about it. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. And I said, my beloved, I'm waiting for you. Hallelujah. With all my heart. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Yes, the point is, I've, I've looked around and even when I went up, listen, I'm going to tell you that church in New York, one thing I know about them, they know how to repent. They know how to cry out to God. Listen, and if God is up there working in New York, God can work here in Iowa. The problem is some of y'all don't know how to cry. You haven't broke down before God in so long. If ever, and God is saying he needs some tears. He said that ain't God. Yes, it is. Brother Brandon said there's no such thing as a dried eye confession. Hallelujah. There's got to be some emotions in this thing. When you really repent, you're truly sorry. Help us, Jesus. Hallelujah. All you got to do is pray. He said, if you ask, you'll get it. Right? If you seek my face in a time of seeking, he said, you shall be, you'll find it if you seek me early. It's late. It's late. It's much later than you think. God don't care about nobody's ego. God don't care about your pride. Hallelujah. That maybe that's not cold or cold. Or Maybe that's a kosher. Maybe that's not cool. Hey Amen. You know, hey Amen. That ain't got nothing to do with God. Amen. You look at those people of the Old Testament and the New, how they cried out to God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Huh? Come on, somebody. You say, oh, oh, well, well, let me say it like this. Sarah's bondswoman, Hagar, was in distress. And she went out and she cried in that desert. Lord, what have I done? All I've tried to do was be a real maid to us. See, Brother Brown would say she was misunderstood. Sarah misunderstood Hagar. Say she's got to go. And all, she never thought about being, uh, bringing forth a child. That was Sarah's doctrine. And all the lady did was be obedient. And Sarah mis- it was jealousy. Y'all know how it goes. But because she was chosen and because she was in Latin, God heard her. But here was Hagar and her bond son, Ishmael, saying, God, what have I done? All have I ever tried to do? You know what God said? Go back to her. He said, I'm going to make you a nation. I'm not going to forget Ishmael. Has he forgotten him? He might be the wildest man in the world. <laughs> and God said he'd be hated to every nation. But he's one of the richest people in the whole world. Amen. And there'll be people in the bride. Amen. Every tongue, kindred, and nation Amen. will be there. Amen. Woo! Come on, somebody. Yes, sir. And God heard her cry and gave her living waters. Amen. A real well. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Gave her a real well. Hallelujah. Quenched her thirst. And say, go on back to Sarah. See, what you see what God, what we fail to see, amen, that God, he's mindful of all things. He's mindful of all your conditions. He knows what you're going through. And my God ain't stupid. He's the greatest mathematician that ever, he ever was and ever will be. His science is still working. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The moon and the sun still coming up amen. ever since he figured it out. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, come on. Like, like the scientists say, and I, this is so good, he said, he said, you know, it's amazing. God said, let there be. He said, and, and the scientists say, amen, that the universe is still expanding. Amen. Because God never said stop. Hallelujah. Stop still exploding. Stop still creating. Stop universe after universe. We're talking about eternity. Amen. Who knows? You might have your own galaxy to you. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that one in. But you never know what God has in his mind. The Bible said it hasn't even entered in our hearts. Is that okay? Listen. Where was I? <laughs> Amen. 9110. He said, There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling place. Now, if you don't know the word of God, how are you? This word right here, when the trials come, when, when, the, when, the, when everything falls, 
the, the, the collapse and you still here per adventure, what you going to say? That ain't for me. God gave me the experience of that. We had a bad ice storm in Lima. Everybody's house, electricity went out around my area. Everybody. Every time mine would flick, I said, there's light in Goshen. Word spoken. And my church and my house, I don't know how God did it, was the only light in the area. Because I refused to let the judgment of God affect my house. I don't know whoever else's light was on, but I know mine was. And every time the devil thought he was going to take it out, I said, uh, 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 there was light in Goshen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. God could be speaking lima, but I'm under the blood. Hallelujah. Mm. Even in Psalms 23, it says, Yea, do I walk through the valley? Which I will what? Fear no evil. Amen. So what's coming? Let it come. Amen. I fear no evil. Why? Wow, my God is in control. Like they say, it's like Pharaoh. And God said unto Moses, why, why cry speak? What you crying for? Amen. You got the power in your hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Stretch out that rod. Hallelujah. Come in. It's in the mouth. Amen. The, listen, the seven seal just didn't open up mysteries to you. It brought the word back to you. Not just to you, but in you. Amen. The same word Adam have, you got it. Amen. If he's in you. Amen. The tree of life. The tree of life is in you. The spoken word has always been the original seed. The Lord told me, showed me that. I said, that's right, Lord. I said, I, I, didn't, I didn't muster it up. But when that dog came after me, I called on the name of Jesus. That dog stopped in his tracks. See, I know that to be true. But my point is this. If God can show you things like that, what about now? What about when you was getting ready to hit somebody or somebody was getting ready to hit you and you say, Jesus, Amen. and it stop on a dime? What do you think? Law said it was supposed to slide. Yeah. Amen. But God stopped it. Amen. You didn't see it, but there were some angels that said, hold it up. Go on again. <laughs> you don't believe me? It's true. Gehazi said, Elijah said, Lord, open up Gehazi's eyes. Amen. He said, listen, I'm going to tell you something about the children of God. There are more of us than there are of them. It looked like the enemy got us, got us a, got an advantage to us because it just looked like you. But you understand, the royal family never leaves home by itself. Amen. <laughs> the royal family always have an entourage. The royal family always have the angel of the Lord encamped Amen. about it. I don't know how he can be with me and be with you at the same time, but the Bible said Amen. so. Ooh, come on, somebody. Now, listen, talk about healing your land. It means healing your territory. Is that all right? Healing your commonwealth. Healing your nation. Hallelujah. The people of your land. Healing. Bringing healing. And think about it. We get in order, even in our own house, what God will do. He'll heal the land. Hmm. Listen to what the Bible says in Proverbs 13, 21. Evil pursueth sinners. Evil. Demonic power pursues you. You don't have to go to it. It will come to you. Let me say it again. The Bible says according to Proverbs 13, 21, evil pursueth sinners. But to the righteous, good shall be repaid. Y'all know what that means? Payday never ends. Repaid. Amen. Amen. But it says, evil pursue sinners. So you don't have to worry. You don't have to go looking for the devil. The devil coming after you. <laughs> Ooh, devil, leave me alone. Come on, get, get real. Let's get stronger than that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, I, I don't know how much time I got, but let me move on. Genesis 18, 20. The Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is, is very grievous. Now, I, I'm reading this because I'm, I'm going to tell you what. 
I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is coming to me, and if not, I will know. Let me say it like this. You know why California had such a bad earthquake? What was that, in 1906 or right in that time? Because they rejected that message. The church rejected it, and God sent judgment. Almost the greatest earthquake that California basically had already. Now, my point is, Whenever a nation rejects the word, judgment comes. Most of all, when the church rejects the word. All right? So now, let, let, let's put it this way. <clears throat> but we did not start seeing flying saucers or UFOs until that time of 1946-48. During that time, they start appearing. Why? Because Israel had now become a nation. And so when Israel became a nation, it was declaring the end of time. And God said, when Israel become a nation, you will see signs in the heavens. Come on, somebody. You'll see some UFOs. Unidentified, y'all, the sea will roar. He said, now listen, when these things pick up, when earthquakes in diverse places, Amen. when it pick up, he said, now nah, the time ain't yet. He said, this is the beginning of sorrow. In 1962, Brother Branham declared, was the year of the beginning of sorrows. 62. Look how it's escalated. In 1963, amen, the women vote came and voted in a, a president, a Ricky, come on. Amen, one of the youngest president. Come on, he was an adulteress. He, he had a, 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 a mistress by the name of Marilyn Monroe. And you think they'd be hiding that? Now they got it in magazines like it's all right. It wasn't all right then, it's not all right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Then they looked at Clinton like he was a wicked man. No, sir, the seed was already sown. Think about it. You look at Clinton and Kennedy, they look so much alike to me. Same spirit. All he did was, was the harvest of what was planted in 1963. Hello, somebody. You say we're not at the end of the road. Yes, we are. Because the Bible says, amen, that at the time of the children's oppression in Egypt, there arose a Pharaoh that knew not Joseph. But that was a good sign because that was the sign of Exodus. That was the time they was getting ready to leave out of here. And now we have come to a place where we have a Pharaoh, a, a king. He's not a president. He's a dictator. He's a Pharaoh. He's calling the shots and he don't know Joseph. He has no idea of the supernatural that took place in America. He don't know about this Christianity. Come on, somebody. He don't know, but he looks at you and says, we're going to have to stop these, these, uh, these uh, holy rollers, these fanatics. Because if we don't stop them, they're going to outgrow us. What do you think the stage is being set for? The stage is all about you. The bride of Jesus Christ. The whole stage is set up for you. To get you out of here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. God is a God of contrast. Is that right? He can't show off his bride. Till there be a certain amount of darkness. Amen. Hallelujah. She's the light of the world. Come on somebody. So there's got to be a certain amount of darkness. That got to be the contrast. Amen. Not of the world. Of the church. Amen. He said. The, he, listen. He said. If the Pentecostal church. Would last a hundred years. He said. From now, back in that day, he said they'd be worse than, worse than the Catholic. Tell me they're not. Now. Now they're worse. Huh? Come on, they look just like them. Same kind of robes. Same kind of outfits. Same kind of beads. Same kind of everything. Same kind of DDD, LDDs. Come on, somebody. But now they have their own pope. They call him the bishop. Huh? Oh, y'all, y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. They got them in the message. 
They, they don't want to say it, but that's the way they do it. That's where they handle it. Oh, you know, Bishop so-and-so coming to town. <laughs> and they run to go see Bishop so-and-so and won't even be faithful in their own church. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, I won't call the brother's name. I remember you heard me say it. I remember being in Tennessee and this one renowned preaching the message. The one brother said, oh, brother, I'm so glad. You know, if it wasn't for your message, if it wasn't for you online, if it wasn't for you, I just don't know where I'd be. Here he's got a home church. I know his pastor, and he's worshiping this man. He's letting this man worship him. I think, oh, my God, that spirit is over here, too. You know, one thing I, I, I say about you, say about the world, they're so, they so blind. Why would you need bodyguards if you got so much Holy Ghost? Why would the Pope need a Pope mobile? <laughs> if he's so much God, why would he need a Pope mobile? And why would these bishops, you know, they got these bodyguards. You can't even get close to them. Did y'all know that? Oh, that's the world of church. They carry their suitcases. They call them armor bearers. <laughs> I said, you got all that Holy Ghost. You don't have to worry about a maniac, would you? <laughs> My bodyguard is Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. I got a wall of fire around about me. Ain't no serpent coming out of my place. Yes, when I see them dark spirits moving through my house, I say, hold it up. I said, no evil come now my dwelling place. I value you, devil, in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't know what I fight at night sometimes. You have no idea. Demons, I'm telling you. I won't go there. But I ain't scared. Hey, Amen. I got the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. And I see them things running. I won't say too much because I won't scare my wife. But the truth is the truth. <laughs> Mm, no, 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 no. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. And this thing is going to get worse. Some of y'all think y'all done seen something. Y'all ain't seen nothing. If Hollywood's scaring you with on those pictures, I'm telling you, it's wild, far worse than that. Amen. Mm. Deuteronomy 8, please. It's late in the evening, people. You look at these things and you think, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Let me tell you something. You better not look back. You better look forward and you forget about all the others and concentrate on your soul. Save your soul. Save yourself from this untoward generation. You know, just, complain, just believe they're behind you like Lot did when it came to his wife. <laughs> Hallelujah. She got to be still behind me because if she ain't, I ain't looking back. Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't know how far he got up the, up the hill when he realized she wasn't there. But I'm going to tell you something, people of God, there ain't no time to look back. You got to keep going. This is your year of Jubilee. This is your time to get free. And we're in a time right now, hell, the, the, you heard what I said, the, the lid, brother, I said the lid is lifted off of hell. That means the demons can come and go as they please. It's only during the, the, the great tribulation, I mean, during the time of the, of the millennium, Satan will be bound. Hmm? Yep. But right now, he's got freedom. Why? Because his know his time is short. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. He, he's doing everything he do, can do to distract you, yep. to keep your mind off of making heaven. You're worried about everybody else. You better worry about your own soul. I don't know whether that word worry is the right one, but be concerned. I ain't going to hell for nobody. Hello? I love you, but you're not worthy of, of, of sending me to <laughs> Y'all, there ain't nobody else, nobody in here. My soul means more to me than anything in the world. Right? I hope your soul means the same. Because I know who I am. You got to know who you are. Well, come on, somebody. You got to know who you are. Jesus knew who he was. And he knew the devil that was next to him called Judas. But he loved him anyhow. Oh, come on. Deuteronomy 8. Is that all right? (laughs) 
You believe the word? Amen. See, it's later than what we think. It's later than what we think. I got children right now, but I'm going to tell you something. I, by faith, I believe they'll be there. But I don't have time to hunt them anymore. I don't have time to chase them anymore. Hello? This is my hour. I cannot allow myself to run out of oil. I got to keep what I got. Come on, somebody. Y'all know how it is. Your children will wipe, you wipe all your virtue out in one day. They will. All they do is bring you some bad news, something you ain't never expected them to do. And all of a sudden, you feel like you're empty, weak. And Satan will use that seed say, all that praying you're doing ain't doing no good. Don't you believe that lying devil? Amen. Brother Brown will say, when conditions get worse, that means it's getting better. Amen. <laughs> Come on. Amen. It takes sometimes a hard way to break some of these spirits off of people. He said, Brother Brooks, are you insane? Maybe I am, but I'm going to say it like this. There's a brother, I forgot his name, up there at Brother Ray Erickson's church, amen, who had AIDS. His sister had been in the message, had witnessed to him all those years. He was a wealthy, rich man, businessman, and he contracted AIDS. He's on the bed dying now, hospice. And the Lord brought a brother in and witnessed to that man. That man received God, gave his life to the Lord, and God healed him from AIDS. Hey, somebody. I know what I'm talking about. I talked to the man myself. Now, he's going on to be with the Lord. You say, well, what? No, he did not die from AIDS. It was just his time. God saved the man. You tell me my God ain't rich in mercy. You tell me my God ain't rich. I know somebody else. People, let me tell you something. I don't care if you meet somebody out there and you witness to them and they got AIDS. Don't be afraid. I'm telling you, there's a cure. Hallelujah! Jesus Christ still heals. I'm a witness. I've seen a man who had AIDS and God healed him. Took him to Calvary. This man was a, was a pimp. He was a drug pusher, pusher, addict and everything down there in, 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 in South Carolina. And God healed him. Now if God can do that for them, what about us? Some of y'all don't even know. Many of us who've been wild out there, God protected you from that anyhow. Easily you could have gotten it. Easily I could have gotten it. Come on, somebody. Uh, come on, y'all. Y'all getting quiet on me. AIDS used to be a homosexual disease. It's not anymore. It's everybody got it. Huh? That's God. You don't know what God done gave you grace to escape. And you ought to be on your knees praising God for it right now. Hmm? You can't sit up here proud and knowing the wickedness you've done. Amen. And God is offering you grace and you, you spewing it. You're pushing it away. That's nonsense. That's demon power that got you in bondage. And God is calling for repentance. If my people, they would just call by my name. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, all that is is homosexuality ain't nothing but a demon in your brain making you think one thing that you're not. And God can cast out that demon out of your brain. Come on, somebody. That's where it is. You got demons of everything. Demons here, there, and demons back there in your brain. That ain't in my notes. That's from God. And God is pleading with somebody here. Romans 8, 2. I don't need to know what nothing. I'm just saying that's between you and God. You know, you can't sneak and peek and you can't go around doing things like thank God don't know when you're doing it. God know what you're doing. You know, you can, you can only play Russian roulette so long before you reach the real bullet. Y'all still love me? Amen. I hope so, because that's the only way you're going to make it. <laughs> Romans 8, 2. <laughs> Deuteronomy 8, 2. Amen? And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee, to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou would keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with man. What God said? I'm doing this. 
I did all this. I allowed the devil to send you through all those trials just to see whether you'll keep my word. Y'all better say amen. Y'all, I got so many, I don't know what kind of looks y'all looking at me, but y'all better, God knows what's, what's going on. Now you say, well, Brother Brooks, I shouldn't, you should, well, let me ask you something. What do you think those angels went down to Sodom and preached? Oh, y'all, come on now. Y'all, it's going to be really nice over here. No, sir, he brought judgment. He said, if you don't repent and get up out of this situation, you're going to die, and the fire of God is going to catch you. Yeah. Amen. I know I love everybody in here. You know, I don't pick on nobody, but I know what God can do. I don't seen too many miraculous things, amen, right now. Deuteronomy 8, 6, therefore thou shall keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of waters, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and plum granites, a land of oil, oil and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. Huh? Come on, somebody. And when something looks like it's going to lack, you need to take God to the word. Take him to the word. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou make mayest big brass. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. And like I said in closing, Israel cried, God sent us a deliverer. We need the deliverer. You know, Abraham promised us a deliverer, and God sent it. Where are you, Lord? Send us deliverer. <laughs> God sent him Moses. God sent Moses. It wasn't what they wanted. See, when God sent William Branham, it's not what the world wanted. They wanted an Elijah, but they wanted an Elijah that was going to come through the assembly of God or the church of God or the Pentecostal assembly, some kind of something. But he wasn't a member of none of them. Come on. Even though he called them brothers, he wasn't a member of none of that. But that's not what they wanted. They wanted somebody they can brag on. He came out of our assembly. Y'all hear what I'm saying? That's what he did. That's where the Pentecostal is. Everybody, like Brother Brown said, every, everybody, you had one assembly that come out, and he had a little boy by the name of David. They called him Little David. He was a preacher. And all of a sudden, all of the church of God and Christ and all of them had Little David. Yeah, it ain't nothing but jealousy. Made the real David stand up. Because that's the way it is in the message. One person get over here, eighth angel, then they got to have an eighth angel, they got to have an eighth angel. I got one too, but it's Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah! Come on. People in this mess is messed up. They think the prophet's children are holy. Ooh. Don't talk about it. But that's the truth. The prophet's children got to be born again just like me. All we've got to do is love them regardless of what condition they're in. Yeah, but they've got to meet Jesus for themselves. Amen. And people are so, oh, it's like something goes over and you say something. No, that's wrong. Amen. Amen. Well, you're going to listen? Oh, listen. God never told me to listen to the prophet's son. God told me to listen to him. Amen. The word of the Lord comes by the word. Amen. Amen. I'm just saying this because I'm hitting the spirit here and I don't know where it is. But let Amen. me tell you something. Ain't, not, ain't nothing holy but the word. Amen. And this word is enough to make us or send us through. Amen. Take us through. Come on, somebody. Yep. Can I ask you a question? Because if Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, he cannot change. Is that right? The children of Israel, when the New Testament church came into being, they had nothing but the Old Testament. 
that they could glean from. They didn't have no scrolls. Hmm? They, had, they, had, they had scribes, you know, Luke and different ones writing and stuff. But listen, understand, they didn't have a printing press. And, and now, now, if God required them to say every word that Jesus said, how are they going to remember it? They didn't have no scrolls. But Jesus promised, according to Ezekiel, he said, I'll write it upon the tables of your heart. That's what, that's, what Mo, that's what Paul came right in Hebrew and says, listen, I'll write it upon the tables of your heart. That's where it is. Amen. You'll know what I said because I'm putting it down in Amen. there. Amen. My point is this. It's by revelation anyhow. Amen. You don't even know what he's saying until it's revealed to you. The Bible said you don't even know that Jesus Christ is the Lord Amen. without it being revealed to you. Christ in you. You don't know that. You can have this thing up in your head and you still don't know God. How do you know you don't know God when you don't trust him? Because once you know him, you'll trust him to your death. Hmm? So my point is, anybody here smart enough in here to remember what is 1,600 tapes? I guarantee you not one person here could name them one by one. I guarantee you, even most of us couldn't even tell what's on them verbatim. Anybody? Now, now wait a minute, wait a minute, but you've got to say exactly what he said. How do you know? <laughs> Y'all understand what I'm pointing? And I'm not making mockery. I'm trying to tell you, when the Holy Ghost comes in you, when the seal of God is coming you, you have the word. It's no longer you living. It's Christ living in you. And you'll know that you know that you know. You may not have ever read it. Let me tell you, so many things I preach. Then down the road I hear a message Brother Brandon preached, and it's exactly what he said. How would I have known? No, I don't know, but Jesus knows what he said. And if I got Jesus on the inside, he knows what he said. I'm not telling you not to study and to read. But if you got the seal of the Holy Ghost in you, that Holy Ghost will will, will vindicate things that you, you, you'll know stuff and don't know how you know it. Because the word is written in the tables of your heart. Hmm? You don't never say, listen, like Laodicea say, we, well, we, we don't have need of nothing. Now, you know, you know, and I know we are in, the, in a place where you come, the counseling is to be tried in the fire. Amen. You can't get out of it. You come to be tested. Come on, y'all losing the anointing now. Y'all losing me. I'm not leaving you or something or what? But listen, I can feel it, so I'm going to close. But let me tell you something by the grace of God. Your outcry, you, you got to know what you're crying for. Because Israel cried, I want to be delivered. Moses came, they didn't want him. So it made them stay in Egypt 40 years more, 40 more years. They stayed under the whip of Pharaoh because when God sent them the deliverer, they didn't want him. They saw him as a murderer. Hmm? Look what has happened. Why are we still here? Brother Branham said it like this. He said, he, he, God, if the generation, this generation don't believe it, God will raise up another generation. Amen. He said he will get that generation Amen. that's going to believe the word of God Amen. and produce a rapture. Yes, Amen. If this generation died not believing, he'll get another generation. He'll get another generation. He'll get another generation. Amen. But the word of God will not come back void. Amen. You love the Lord? Amen. Let's stand. Hmm? He said, Jerusalem cried. Lord, we, we know the Messiah. We want a Messiah. Then when Jesus came, he said, God confounded them. He didn't send him on a horse. He made him a babe in a manger. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He confounded the wise people. He made him a baby in a manger. And it was what they needed. Hallelujah. It still was the grace of God. 
come along at the age of 12. He, he was so smart and uh, unlearned, amen, by his father, he confounded the doctors of divinity. Where did he get his teaching from? Oh, glory to God. I'm feeling pretty good. Now, people of God, let me say it like this. I can't give you the Holy Ghost, but if I could, I would. Hmm? When the word of God said, and go have a none, such as have, give I thee. They perceived they had faith, though. See, it don't make no difference how a person come up in the line for prayer or if you want, oh, I want the Holy Ghost. Your faith got to be there. Amen. And all of us are going through something. Now, let me say it like this. Don't blame yourself. If you're going through something, it's only because God is trying to perfect you. Amen. We must learn to say thank you, Lord. In everything, say thanks. All things, all things, all things. Lord, they finna take my head off. Thank you, Lord. Huh? They finna throw me into the lions, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When they whip Peter, James, and John, they says, Lord, thank you for counting me worthy to suffer for. Oh, my, 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 Thank you. For allowing me to suffer for your name's sake. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not afraid of this hour that's coming upon us. Hallelujah. If he would count me worthy. I want to escape it though. Hallelujah. Trust he count me worthy. But let me tell you something. Before that rapture take place. You will be feeling pressure. Don't let nobody think. Because I'm going to tell you like this, what's happening in the spirit. You're now feeling the spiritual pressure. Before a murder takes place, it happens spiritually first. Anything, right? It happens spiritually first. Then it manifests itself in the natural. So what you're now feeling is demonic pressures fighting you in your mind. Right? Trying to do what? Produce fear. Come on, even this message I preach here tonight, Satan is trying to produce fear in your heart, trying to make you, some of us, believe you're not going to make it. That's nonsense. That's a, that's a spirit of the devil. God is preaching this word to tell you that you are. Oh, oh God, I can't do it. That's why he said he will. That's why the covenant is unconditional. It ain't about you, it's about him. People of God, don't let the devil make you think negative when the word come. Amen. If somebody says, oh, my, there's an eagle and a crow, you better say, I'm not eagle. Amen. Confession. Confession. When you confess something, you've said something that someone else has said. In other words, you make, when you confess your faith, you're just saying what Jesus said about you. Amen. I'm holy. Amen. I'm sanctified. Amen. I'm bride. Amen. I'm chosen. I'm elected. That's my confession. Amen. He said it. I'm Amen. saying it. Amen. And he said he brings that confession to pass, right? Amen. By the words of your mouth, you're creating the atmosphere. Amen. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you got you to gotta realize by the grace of God, when you're crying out before the Lord, you're crying out to, to have it done. And so Israel cried out, but you see what happened? In their hearts, they weren't ready. They wanted deliverance. But their deliverance that they wanted was only to be more sinful. It proved it. Because when they got in the wilderness, all they did was to be more sinful. Well, it was already in the heart. Before they left Egypt, it was still in the heart. Showing that the blood doesn't clean your, cleanse your heart when it's in justification. Huh? They went in the wilderness to be sanctified, but they wouldn't let God sanctify them. He put the test in your life to get out all the unbelief. That's what he said. I read that in Deuteronomy. To get all the unbelief out of your heart, he brings you the test. Is God God? Is God God? He's a healer. He's a deliverer. I don't care how long it takes. He still said he's a healer. If he can't heal me, how can he rapture me? 
How can I get up from the dead if he can't restore me? Because if you get up from the dead, that, that's a complete restoration. <laughs> that's the one of the great that, that You can't be no more perfect. You understand me? So my point is this. Let them come. Let your trials come. But why, I guarantee you, if you really start worshiping God in your trials now, you'll see deliverance. He will smile on you. But God wants you to confuse the devil with your, with your confession. Huh? He wants you to praise him. Thank him. Glorify him. Amen. I, I, I was running on my treadmill and somebody had done broke it. And I jammed that finger. Ooh. Did the treadmill stop? Yes. But it, 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 y'all, I tell you what, these little fingers, they can bring some pain, boy. And I'm telling you, I, I, I spoke to that finger now. And I don't know whether a little piece of something in there is still yet or not. I don't know, but I spoke to it, and I rubbed it in the name of Jesus. I said, you will not get infected. Hallelujah. I, of course, I did what I, I was supposed to do, you know, clean it up and everything else with peroxide and all that. But that don't stop infection if, 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 if the demon is there. God stopped it. Hallelujah. I've been able to sleep with it almost. It's almost well. But oh, my. Little things like that, I still praise him for it. Ain't God good? Jesus. Jesus. I'm going to stay right under the blood. I'm going to stay. Anybody want prayer? You can get prayer. I'm going to stay. You need the Holy Ghost? Let's pray for that too. Hallelujah. You need deliverance? Let's pray for that. Hallelujah. Say. Hallelujah. Say. Oh, and the devil came. Oh, I'm going to stay right under the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stay. Oh, when the devil can't do me no harm. Oh, no harm. No harm. No harm. Oh, no harm. I'm going to stay right under the blood. And the devil can't do me no harm. Amen. You know, God is good to us. You know, but think about it. He's the only one that can grant repentance. It shows something's wrong. Something's going on when we can all stand and think we're all all right. And the Holy Ghost through the word of God has already showed you that you're not. Don't tell me that God stood up here and he preached the word in vain. That he didn't know, he don't know what he's talking about. And he ain't talking about you or me. He, he, you know what I'm saying? God done hit every one of us. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something. Where is, where is the repentance? Where is, the, where is this, this thing that God is looking for? A broken and contrite spirit. He can't work with you until that happens. A broken and contrite spirit. God. Can't work with us until that spirit is broken. You want from God, you gonna God gonna have to you got to break before Him. Whether it's here or at home, you better seek God desires for, to, to to soften our hearts and and to remove whatever that is that's holding us a religious something. I don't know what you call it, but it just seems like it's it's what the the, the spirit of the age. You know you. You you tough you 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 know you hard you, you. and I'm, that ain't what God looking for. Yeah, you got to get soft before Him. He want to remove that stony heart and give you a heart of flesh. Hallelujah, Amen. There was another song that I wanted to sing and I wrote it down somewhere. We'll sing it and then, you know, I I just I just love the Lord. It's going home time. We're justified by faith. It's going home time. We're sanctified by the blood. It's going home time. We're the blood. Oh, it's going home time. And the bride is wrapped in ring faith. Oh, my. It's going home time. We're justified by faith. 
It's going on time. We're sanctified by the blood. It's going on time. We're full of the Holy Ghost. It's going on time. And the bride is wrapped to ring Oh, one of these mornings it won't be long. You look for me and I'll be gone. When I get to heaven, gonna sing and shout. There be nobody to turn me out. When I get to heaven, gonna tell the news. How I got over, how I got over. I'm so glad that the bride is wrapped in ring Oh, it's going on time. We're justified by faith. Woo! It's going on time. We're sanctified by the blood. It's going on time. We're full of the Holy Ghost. It's going on time. And the bride is wrapped in ring Oh, one of these mornings it won't be long. You look for me and I'll be gone. Till I get to heaven, gonna sing and shout. There'll be nobody turn me out. Till I get to heaven, gonna tell the news. How he brought me through, how he brought me through. I'm so glad that the bride is wrapped in ring It's going home time. We're justified by faith. It's going home time. We're sanctified by the blood. It's going home time. We're full of the Holy Ghost. It's going home time. And the bride is wrapped in ring Once again, it's going home time. We're justified by faith. It's going home time. We're sanctified by the blood. It's going home time. We're full of the Holy Ghost. It's going home time. And the God is rapturing faith. Oh, my. Whew. You know, Jubilee time, they made a lot of noise. Amen. They made a lot of noise. Amen. I'm not going to hold you. I'm going to have our brother come. Let me say, I don't know. I just know God is in control. God is in control. I remember I was worried. When I was in Lima, I preached four years. I had to do the song service and everything else. The only thing I wasn't was the deacon or the trustee. I wasn't that, but I had to do everything by myself for four years. I was so worn out, I got to praying and praying and praying, and God said, these are my people. That's all he had to say. And in a short period of time, you know what I was trying to get them to see? The power of worship. For four years, I labored with them in song and just, and, and, you know, all of a sudden, it came. Whew. And when it came, it's still coming. <laughs> they still got it going on. Amen. Because once that revelation strike you, you'll open your mouth, even if you're the horsest thing in the room, you'll crank it out. Because you realize it's power in worship. I am not the... Even in your mouth. Hallelujah. That worship, that praise. Y'all think I'm trying to work you out. I wish I could. (laughs) Like like our brother Conley said the other day, I wish I could put some fire under you. (laughs) Hallelujah. Glory to God. You'll be fanning some of this hot up in here. (laughs) Glory to God. Amen. God is real, people. He's sweet. Brother Conley, how, how old are you again? Seventy. If the Lord would tarry, I wish I would be doing as well as you are in physical, you know, and in spiritual, brother. Let me tell you something. In your spirit, you want it, but it's that body. <laughs> it's like a lot of us. I'm getting, you know what? I can't even do higher, higher no more. <laughs> That's why I don't do it no more. <laughs> I get so poor. I can't do it no more. Y'all remember when we first started out? I was running all over the place. Age catch up with you. Inside, inside, I'm a young man. But this house still think it want to move on. <laughs> so I want you to don't feel bad. Sometimes you try to get into it and you can't. Now, y'all young people, y'all ain't got no excuse. None. None. Amen. You ain't got no excuse. Amen. My little grandson and my grandsons, and they out here. And then Troy, see, God covers it in the back. 
he have the, the little ones up in here shouting and praising. And then Brother Troy brought sons and th down there back there praising. And, and y'all wondering what to do. Nobody taught those kids to do that. The Holy Ghost got those children doing that. And I'm going to tell you, whether y'all realize it or not, is a real rebuke. Are they feeling or not? I don't know what they're feeling, but they're out there. And they don't care whether you see it or not. 